Raise your hand if you feel scared. Right now, the average American does believe in climate change, but does not believe that that is the most important issue. They don't particularly care because it's beyond the horizon of their own lifetime. I'm here for my two boys. I am terrified for their safety. What we are in fact facing is a dire planetary emergency. We are essentially creating the sixth mass extinction period. So we have a massive industrial scale transformation that we have to make. We have to do it as quickly as possible. Turning things around from the current direction is something that has to be done, and that will be difficult to do. There's no one biggest obstacle. We have obstacles at every level. I think a lot of it's going to be political. Social organization. Shifting people's beliefs. Scale, and when I mean scale, like how many wind turbines, how many solar cells, how many nuclear power plants, how many geothermal stations. The biggest barriers to getting the right technologies in place are those that are built into our political and regulatory system now because we're used to dealing with the fuels and technologies of the past and the people who own the fuels and technologies of the past don't particularly want to see change. We have no idea how hard they will fight back once we get serious, and we're nowhere near serious yet. Change is hard for individuals, for companies, for governments, uh, for all kinds of institutions, for humans. For every one call that uh, they're hearing from an environmentalist, there are 10, 50, or 100 coming from opposition. The fact that you have uh, major uh, uh, political campaign contributions coming from industries that don't want to see change happen, uh, that can be a, a serious potential stumbling block. The exciting part to me is that once we get the CEOs of the big companies realizing if you want the lights on and all the, all the equipment on in your factories and in your office buildings in the years 2020, you need to get to work. Policy. We need to realign the policy signals. Technologies like coal have a competitive advantage in the marketplace because the policies tend to support them. Really, that's only a symptom because what it gets to, if you sort of just peel the onion one layer, is it's all about finance. Capitalism is probably the best mechanism that we have for allocating resources across our society if the costs can be properly incorporated into the market system. We need to get the cost of clean energy to be lower than that of coal. If we can't make green power cheaper than brown power, we're screwed. As much as we want to be altruistic, it's all about economics. How much solar should we use? How much wind power should we use? They have to be market driven. We don't like paying high prices for energy. Energy is almost, we view it almost like a public um, a public right to have cheap gasoline, cheap electricity, cheap, cheap, cheap. If we were to pay more, the real cost, we would find a lot of ways to start saving energy and our bills would actually begin to go down. It's been very hard to move this idea, this urgent need, um, up on people's priority scale. We're a fight or flight species. If there's a tiger straight in front of us, our adrenaline pops up. This is a very different kind of a threat. A lot of people that have just, it's so big and complex that they're unwilling to get involved. Most scientists just don't want to get mixed up in a public debate, and I think that it's essential that they do that, especially because they often know much more than just about anybody else. It's purely a will-based thing. If, if we actually said, we are going to hit this climate target. It's technically achievable and quite quickly. We've kind of gone in the last decade from a stage of denial or um, just being committed to business as usual to now acknowledging we've got a problem called climate change. We need to be designing the human operating system to take advantage of the technology. I've spent a lot of time thinking about energy efficiency. That's, a, that's maybe a third of the renewable energy conversion we need to make, 25%. And it's a fascinating problem because it pays for itself, yet nobody does it. A lot of people don't do energy efficiency just because they really they don't know what to do. We need to be able to express this in a way that people say, yes, I want it. If you win the hearts and minds, then the victory is assured. We cannot innovate our way out of this problem. Well, we have to innovate, but, but maybe more socially. It requires a massive adaptation and it needs all of us. We're in a crisis right now, and somehow in the last hundred years, 
our country has been able to mobilize around other threats. Unlike World War II, using that analogy where there was this common drive that united the country, we're not quite there yet. I don't think there are a lot of shared goals right now. How do we change our thoughts and, and mindset? How do we change our companies and our institutions? How do we rethink business? How do we rethink success? How do we make this a real movement all across America? Everything's impossible until it's not. I think it's going to be the fight of our lives.